So if you remember at the end of chapter 2, we spent some time examining exponents and what a negative exponent, what that operation would do to, uh, to a number. Um, so we're going to end chapter 3 kind of the same way. We're going to learn a new operation. You have your operations are adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You have exponents that are, those are operation things you do with numbers, um, ways you operate on them. Um, this is a new one called a square root. Taking the square root uh, quite simply just means doing the opposite of squaring something. So if, I, uh, if I'm looking at the square root of uh, the 4 there, the opposite of, square, of, of squaring 2 is to take the square root of 4. So I'm thinking to myself, what number, if I squared it, would, uh, would give me 4 for an answer? The square root of 4 is 2. So uh, you have this list here of what we call the perfect squares. A perfect square, uh, by definition here, you see, is a number that has integers as its square root. So it can be positive or negative. Remember, integers are defined as all whole, whole numbers or their opposites. Um, as an example here for, for geometry, a perfect square, obviously you know what a square is, has equal sides. So here you have 4 by 4, which is 4 squared, and the area here is 16. Remember, area is length times width. So if we square 4, uh, the, the square root here, if I knew the area, I could figure out the side lengths. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of this table with the rest of the perfect squares. Notice, whether it's positive or negative, you get the same perfect square. Um, so for instance, with 7 squared, it's the same as negative 7 squared. This because a negative times a negative is a positive. Um, so here they are, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144. You need to memorize those. I don't make you memorize much in this class, but those will definitely help you out here as far as your, your speed goes. Um, and most of you probably do. The only one maybe that you need to memorize is uh, 121. Notice that every positive, every perfect square has two square roots. You've got a positive one and a negative one. And notice there are no negative perfect squares. In other words, that bottom row there, uh, that's because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So the positive square root, uh, this is uh, something important here, okay? There are two square roots here. There's a positive one and a negative one. We call the positive square root. It has a special name. We're going to use that in a bit here. That's called the principal square root. That's principal L-E, not A-L. Not your pal. That's the main one. Let's talk about what this looks like then. Okay, the two square roots of each of these numbers. So for instance, uh, 36. I'm thinking to myself, what number, if I, if I square it, what number will give me 36? Well, 5 squared is 25. That doesn't work. 4 squared is 16. I could go higher than 4, higher than 5. Try 6. 6 squared is 36. Now, there are two square roots there. There's 6, yes, but there's also negative 6, because negative 6 times negative 6 gives me positive 36. Now, there's two ways I can write this. I can either write uh, the 6 comma negative 6 that you see there, or a new symbol here. I can write this little plus or minus sign. That means positive or negative 6. So there's two square roots of 121, positive and negative 11. There's two square roots of 81, positive and negative 9. Two square roots of 49, positive or negative 7. There is a special symbol that we use for uh, square roots. It looks a little bit like a division sign. You can see it there on that clock, okay? And you see all the perfect squares. It looks a little bit like a division sign, but on the left side, you have that little pop-up there to form that. So it's like a, a V with, the, uh, with a bar extending over the, over the numbers that you're going to take a square root of, okay? So uh, square, root of, uh, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is, four, or is 2, square root of 9 is 3, all the way around the clock, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, just a little visual there to help you remember what the perfect squares are. So let's take a look at how we evaluate expressions that contain square roots. First of all, when we evaluate these expressions, we're going to use the principal square root. Now, you could use both square roots and get actually two answers here. You're actually going to do that next year at the end of algebra um, when you look at uh, quadratic functions. Um, but we're just going to use, the, for our purposes, the principal square root. When you do these, obviously there's more than one operation. You need to remember to use the order, the correct order of operations. Um, now, square roots, you need to have a little discussion here about where they go in the order. 
Well, remember, squaring something is the opposite of, uh, or the square roots is the opposite of squaring. So it's the opposite of doing an exponent. So remember, with multiplication and division, those are the same thing. Addition and subtraction, they're opposites, but they're really the same thing. Um, same thing here with, uh, with squaring and square roots. Um, they have a different symbol, but actually, and this is, this is kind of interesting, you'll see this in Algebra 2, um, really, truly, what uh, square roots are is when you, uh, you have an exponent that is a fraction. So, like, for instance, uh, I could write the square root of 4, or I could write 4 to the 1 half power, and that would be the same thing. So, exponents, square roots, like I said, same exact thing, uh, same thing with multiplication division. Division is just multiplying by the reciprocal. Subtraction is just adding the opposite. Um, so, when we do the order of operations, we're going to stick square roots right in here with the E. All right, so let's take a look at a couple examples here. We're going to look at the square root of 25 minus 2, first of all. Well, I have two operations going on here. I have a square root, and I have subtraction. Obviously, subtraction comes before, uh, or sorry, subtraction comes after exponents. So I'm going to take the square root of 25, that's 5, and I'll subtract 2, and 5 minus 2 is 3. Very, very easy problem there. Next one's a little bit more challenging, but notice... Uh, what the square root is covering. The square root is covering 100 divided by 25. So there's actually two ways I can approach this problem. Um, I can just do the operation. It's kind of like that 100 divided by 25 is in parentheses, even though there's no parentheses there. Since it's all underneath the square root sign, I'm just going to do 100 divided by 25 and then take the square root of that. Well, 100 divided by 25 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. The other way I could have done this is to sort of, uh, in a way, distribute the square root to the numerator and the denominator. Um, so the way to do that, then, is to treat this as if it's the square root of 100 over the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 100 is 10, the square root of 25 is 5, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. All right, next problem. We have two square roots inside uh, of a parenthesis here. So what I need to do is I need to, first of all, recognize um, that I'm going to keep my negative out front. I also need to recognize that in between this two square roots, notice there's one square root sign over the 9, and there's a different square root sign over the 144. Uh, and remember, what operation is there when no operation is shown? Multiplication. So what I'm doing here is, inside parentheses, they have the square root of 9 times the square root of 144. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 144 is 12. So I have, what I have here is the opposite of 3 times 12. 3 times 12 is 36, so it's negative 36. All right, now notice in the next one, you have 70 minus 6 underneath the square root sign. 70 minus, so I'm going to do that first. 70 minus 6 is 64, so notice I keep the square, I haven't taken the square root yet. 5 times the square root of 64 is 5 times 8. Notice I don't rewrite the square root sign. I have a couple people... Uh, from year to year, who after they take the square root of 64 and write 8, they'll write a square root sign over the 8. Don't write it again once you've already taken it. Once I've taken the square root of 64 and said that it's 8, uh, I'm not taking the square root of 8 again. So it's just 5 times 8, no square root sign here. 5 times 8 is 40. All right, why don't you pause the video right now and see if you can do these next three on your own. So do these next three on your own, then come back and check your answers. So for the next one, I have the negative square root of 25. So that means i got to take the square root first, and whatever I get, I'm going to make that negative. So that's negative 5 minus 2, which I'm going to make plus negative 2, which is negative 7. On the next one, notice the square root sign is only over the 64. It doesn't extend to the 4. So that means I have a square root and I have division. Square roots come first because they're exponents. Square root of 64 is 8 divided by 4 is 2. Next one's probably the most difficult one. Check out everything that's going on here. I have a square root sign over 52 minus 3. It's inside a parentheses, so I have a square root and I have an exponent inside parentheses. I also have a minus sign separating those two. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the 52 minus 3 to figure out what I'm taking the square root up. That's going to be 49. Minus 1 squared. Notice I did not get rid of the parentheses. I did not get rid of that negative, so I'll just write it down. Next step, I have square roots and exponents on the same line. Really, 
I can do those together because they're the same operation, right? So here I'm going to write uh, the I'm going to write a negative. I'm going to write parentheses. Seven minus one is still inside it. Well, I cannot get rid of those parentheses until I have done this everything inside. And everything inside is the, the square root, the exponent, which I've done, but there's also the subtraction, which I have not done. So the next step then is just going to be uh, seven minus one is six. So my answer is negative six. All right, so that's it on uh, square roots. This is kind of what your homework's going to look like tonight. But I wanted to take this one step further because notice square roots are the opposite of squaring something. But you know there's more than just uh, raising something to the power of two for exponents. You could also raise it to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, really to any power. So what I wanted to look at next was the uh, was something called a cube root. Um, notice a cube root uh, would be something that would make a cube here. As I, I used a rubrics, rubrics, that's a hard word to say, rubrics cube that is 3 by 3 by 3. Um, when I do that, really what I'm doing is I'm finding the volume. Uh, volume is different than area because it's three-dimensional. So volume, remember, is multiplying all the dimensions together, 3 times 3 times 3, which is the same thing. There's the, the length, the width, and the height. The same thing is 3 cubed, 3 to the third power, which is 27. So when I take this cube root of something, I'm thinking to myself, just like the square roots, I'm thinking to myself, what number, if I raise it to the power of 3, what number will equal the number I want? So if I do the cube root of 27, notice there's a little 3 next to the square root sign to show me it's not a square root, it's a cube root. Um, what number, if I multiply it by itself 3 times, will equal 27? And you notice it's 3 here, okay? Just like that, what number, if I raise it to, uh, if I multiply it by itself three times, will equal eight? Well, two times two times two, two cubed equals eight, so two is the cube root of eight. Uh, 64, a little bit more tricky. Um, four times four times four, four times four is 16, 16 times four is 64, the cube root of 64 is four. Won't go too much higher here, but five, the cube root of, uh, the five cubed is 125, so that's the next perfect cubed, perfect cube. Uh, 6 cubed, 6 times 6 is 36, times 6 is, uh, you help me out here, 216. 7 cubed is 343, so cube root of 343 is 7. Uh, 8, i got to be honest, I'm not sure on 8. I know 9 is 729, but those are pretty easy to figure out if you just multiply it. I'm going to do 64 times 8. I think it's 512. You might have to check my math there. So a challenge for you, this is uh, in addition to the homework, if you want to kind of tackle this, can you figure these out? Can you figure out what the fourth root of 81 is? What the fifth root of 32? In other words, what number, if I multiply by itself, five times would equal 32? The sixth root of 15,625? That's actually a little bit easier problem than you think. Um, so take a stab at those problems. You have those, the uh, book work to do that's dealing with square roots only. Um, but just wanted to point out that there's more than just square roots out there. There's actually any any of the the operation here. The opposite of exponents is actually to uh, to do the root. Um, just depends on what the exponent is that you want to do the opposite of. So good luck with homework.